Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Midnight Strike I, Through I'm Mormons not, uh, live stream. My I can't headphones hear aren't anything. Out. Yeah. Oh, your head. Oh, you're. Oh, no, I'm an idiot. Wait, uh, no, I'm not an idiot. Oh, the headphones just. Oh, oh there, we, there we go. Yeah, oh, there we go. We can all hear ourselves. It's so yeah. awkward. Everyone could hear us, but we couldn't hear each other. Yeah, I know. So, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to the Midnight Strike Through Mormons live stream. You almost done there, <laughs> Brad? <laughs> I didn't realize that was still on that. Oh, no, I'm totally <laughs> eating this. He's <laughs> munching his steak. <laughs> you know, hey, we, we're getting it all in as soon as we can. Anyway, um, all right, I am your host, Card Nellis, and I'm joined today in the studio by Jordan Barrowman, cinematographer at large, also by Hayden and Jackson Wayne Paul. Jordan's way too handsome to be behind Marines the camera. And, <laughs> and he gets... True. Wow, you yeah, guys are so and, nice. Uh, <laughs> he gets his own camera. Yeah, he's still <laughs> going to town on that steak there, Brad? Of course I am. Okay, oh, just okay. just don't ting so loud. <laughs> you know, it sounds like I walked into Macaroni Grill. <laughs> ting! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, uh, do they have Macaroni Grills in Utah? Yes, is yeah, that, they do. Uh, they totally do. That's yeah. more of a bougier okay. place that uh, kids would go after prom, prom and yeah, stuff pr- like that. was that. a prom place. Oh, okay, cool, cool. You guys right, were rich awesome. enough to go to Macaroni Grill for prom? <laughs> What pretty sure we went to these? the pie pizzeria. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. You do for not eat that on a date. That's, awesome, that's good <laughs> stuff, dude. That's My funny. Is delicious. <laughs> okay, so um, anyway, uh, people are asking, what's for dinner, Brad? Steak uh, from Will the Thrill. Will the Thrill, Will the Thrill is a grill master. He's a grill he's master. He's a man that mastered his meats on the grill. Yeah, honestly. and so those those shirts that he's uh, he has about like uh, rub the best buns with this spice or whatever, and all those funny innuendos he has <laughs> on his shirts. <laughs> you know, those are those are well earned on the Traeger. And so uh, before live streams do this, but um, Brad is prepping for a film in which he has to represent a uh, a, a young um, cadet, shall we say? Of a certain organization, and um, he's got to get yoked. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Father in Heaven, hallowed be his gains. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, he, he's he's uh, he's he's hitting the, the the steak, the meats, the proteins. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So anyway, yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on. So we're having fun here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yesterday do. we had one of our most popular streams ever. It was super fun. We talked about Book of Mormon evidences with none other than the Paul brothers, and so we're gonna um, uh, we're gonna dive right back into that topic. They've had quite a big day. In fact, these guys, after coming home from Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia with um, researcher Jim Gee, are now doing like a little bit of a press tour. You know, are you guys kind of an official big deal now? You know, you had uh, KHTS earlier today. Um, h- how's it feel to all of a sudden having to be doing all this th- this press on? Dude, it's crazy. Like our mom has never been more proud of us. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's she, funny. <laughs> she she watched last night at least. I think she was one of them. So yeah. Okay. Cool. She's one of the hundred. Yeah. So um yeah, I noticed that uh today. Oh well. It's going crazy on me. Oh no! What's going on with my? Oh, I see. It's I actually double clicked on Discord. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. No, it's okay. But um, yeah, look at you guys. You were at the radio station today. Actually, uh, shoot picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's one of your best. You know, yeah. that's one of your better. <laughs> that uh, is one of your best. The uh, what is that? The uh, the portrait uh, function on the uh, camera. Of course, here's uh, Jordan doing what he does best as well, making sure that everybody looks good. Mm-hmm. All that right. is one ear of me. That yeah. is. Uh, yeah. that's uh, a oh, good you're right. Ear, though. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that that's a great picture, Carden. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I, I try and do everybody justice. Um, and you did say that you had a face for radio, and of course, yeah. world's coolest board operator right here, none other than Andrew. Dude, that Delgado. mustache was sick. Yeah, yeah his that's mustache that was, was that's some good wax on there. Now, is it just me, or does he look like a really cool? man? Mix of Geraldo Rivera <laughs> and yeah. Jack Black. Yeah, Ooh, oh, you know what I said. Yeah, yeah. Or that yeah. Uh, mouse on Ratatouille that uh, huh? is not the r- actual smart Ratatouille, but his friend. Yeah, you I know, know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The mouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess uh, okay. the rat on Ratatouille. <laughs> okay. So, do you, you want to go up to this guy and be like, "Hey, you look like that rat." Dude, he's the favorite character. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding? True. That That's is true. true. He is. He is if he is beloved. Then mm-hmm. his name is beloved, right? Yeah, so that. anyway, um, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty wild. And you know what's kind of funny is, it's it's really amazed me the amount of pushback 
just by mentioning that you're doing Book of Mormon archaeology that you get. I mean, do you remember some of the comments in that live stream? Yeah, it was pretty were crazy. Angry. Yeah, but, they did, but the thing was, they, they weren't, weren't even talking about the Book of Mormon. They, uh, well, they don't contend with anything we say. That it's always what about or what about Joseph? What about Smith? what about what about? Hey, do you want to address some of the? Do you want to address some of those comments really fast before we dive yeah, right in? Yeah, what was the one? Do you remember Jordan? Here, let's. Hey, can you put? Oh, the, convicted uh, felon. Yeah, or Joseph Smith was. No, a let's read it. Felon. Does some? Can somebody throw it in the Discord? The uh, the, link. the link to Facebook. Yeah, I think so. Uh, while I'm pulling that up, oh, we'll yeah, just I was put. Like, as does a it bother saver. you that Joseph Smith? Was was convicted. arrested. The, that was the first one. Arrested then, for multiple crimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then we had uh, the beautiful Crystal Lee talk about how she's really yeah she's hot. Who's that? And then <laughs> Who's that? And up. then uh, we had. Can I just score you some points. That bro? same. <laughs> <laughs> we had that same lady. Yeah, mention garments and mention some other. Things. Oh, I didn't get. I, I didn't get that far. I've come to the conclusion: that. anybody who is up in arms about garments. Is just jealous. <laughs> they want that magic so, underwear, dude. They're so, <laughs> and they don't have it. <laughs> you know, you can't read the Old Testament and not think other okay. as other Christian sects are missing out, dude. Let me and no, let me tell you. Uh huh. Until garments come out with the pocket. For your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh sorry, dude. Jordan. I know this is live. I really apologize <laughs> to everyone, but Banana I will. Hammock. I will continue to wear stance underwear until, <laughs> <laughs> until the church. Sorry. You really know this is I just, live. I just my bad. Sent the, I just oh sent my the gosh. Link. Okay. Well, I, I do have to say. Do you remember the um the one podcast we did about a year ago? Where garments have real power. That's why Nimrod wanted them. Do you remember that that one, Brad? That one was fun. That one yeah. was fire. Yeah. All right. Garments are so comfortable, in my opinion. I I love. They really I are. Well, you get to cheat and get the cool military kind, bro. Us mm. laymen, they, not, they don't sell the specific the mi military kind. Well, no, they do, but they don't work with the Marine Corps. It's just Army. Yeah. I I wore really? a, I wore a, uh, an Army garment one time, um, and my first sergeant said, "Hey, mother effer." Is that is that the color we wear now? <laughs> and I'm like, this is my religious garment. He's like, did I ask? Go get rid of it. And I was just like, oh, oh my gosh. savage! Welcome to the Marine Corps. <laughs> First start. <sergeant. laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's nuts. Yeah. yeah. So I do have to say. So actually, I got a little bit of question here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so obviously, we don't want to make light of sacred things. But this is actually a legitimate question I have. Um, is we have holy uh, consecrated oil? Like for example, in the last live stream. Uh, I believe there was three members. I'm still waiting for some of their emails, I think. I, I have to double check. But they were very generous with this, so we offered to be generous back. And they're getting um, some consecrated oil from the Mount of Olives, where we went we got this when we did our journey to the Holy Land. We thought, hey, this is kind of a cool little give, uh, gift that we can give back. Originally, I had purchased these from my elders' quorum because we wanted... Um, a gift for the elders quorum, but then our bishop had given us those cool little keychain ones that are much smaller and a little bit more accessible. So they used those, and I had some of these extras left over. So I thought, oh, you know, we'll give them out. So anyway, um, I was just gonna say that. Uh, shoot, where was I going with this? What were we talking about? We're talking about the power of things One of with garments. Of sacred oh yeah, no, yeah. okay. So just like we have, um, thanks for bailing me out there. I totally got chemo brain. And I was also trying to. We've got two <laughs> new members in the chat and a super chat. So I was like juggling seven mental uh, balls at once, and I dropped one. So anyway, um, just like any extra virgin olive oil can be thus made sacred for the healing of the sick and the afflicted upon our blessing it. The old school original garments were just made that way. You took your garments and then through a personal basically blessing process, yes. you created them, right? And it wasn't really until the 40s to the 60s that the church did the manufacture and kind of took over and, and through social norms. But you can do that in the military. So you can actually take your whatever your undergarment is for the military. You're, they're called skivvies. They're called skivvy, skivvy shorts. You get your skivvy shorts and you can go. So, but can members do that? I don't know mm. if members can do it. I just know I can. Like, see, well, I think that's that, the question. Would that get Jordan back to church if he could do that with his stance <laughs> underwear? <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that's, that's, one, that's one step. That's one step. <laughs> okay. Dude, okay. Actually, maybe. 
Well, so the way the process is you have to keep it. It has to be packaged. You send it to the church facility, the distribution facility. And you don't even have to say you're in the military. I don't they think. screen print it on. They screen print really? it on. Really? The marks. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. so well, that's the thing. is, like, well, Can the average person do that? Because, like, know. for example, dude, I have a freaking 36-inch inseam. Nothing fits me. I have a 7-foot-2 arm span. I'm constantly after. True Classic Tees is the only place that I can actually buy T-shirts. And they last maybe like seven or eight washes. I'm wearing one you right know? now. Hey, me too. True classic yeah, tees. Yeah, true classic tees. They're, They're tall. Like, I, it, it, I swear those are the only people that have anything that fits my really weird, odd, large Polish ogre frame. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, ogre frame. That's that was good. very descriptive. Yes. It's like Shrek, <laughs> but just in real life. Okay. You know, Yo, give yourself some <laughs> credit. <laughs> you know on. what I'm saying? Like Dude, it's like Jordan Borrowman, but just hot, though. attractive. <laughs> so <laughs> no, just I just told I you to be nice to yourself, so you're mean to me. <laughs> Look, this is a very forceful binary. Okay, <laughs> you know, like it's black and white on this side of the table. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, um, so uh, I was I was kind of wondering, like, uh, it, that's like a gray area that I don't even know what the actual real truth is. Because if so, I'm thinking that's something that we got to start doing. You know what I'm saying? Because if the military guys can do it, and it's not something just specifically reserved for the military, like I'm all in, man. Dude, you should try it and then report. Try to send it in. See, see how it goes, dude. Just it's tell better people. to ask forgiveness than permission in our church. So <laughs> you know what? We're doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. So just see what they say. Okay, so before we go any farther, a uh, really fast, we got a member, guys, Snagret. Welcome to the Telestial Kingdom. Welcome, Snagret. Um, welcome, Snagret. Snagret. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you like that one, Jordan? <laughs> Was it Snagret or Telestral? It was Welcome to the Telestial <laughs> Kingdom from Cardin. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought that that would happen. Well, yeah, you know, maybe, like, who will greet us? It was probably Cardin will be the greeter at the Telestial Kingdom. I yeah. Wouldn't that be an there. awesome <laughs> calling for eternity? You'd get to meet the a greeter? lot of famous people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just be the ward greeter in Telestial. Uh, no, in Celestial, it's all the boring people who live fulfilled lives and you never really heard of because <laughs> they were constantly sacrificing. You know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of rock stars and poets that are probably going Telestial, right? For sure. So anyway, um, Snagra, uh, welcome to Telestial Kingdom. Thanks for becoming a member. And uh, he does mention that it's a little bit late for the people on the East Coast. You know what? Thanks for your sacrifice, brother. But I got to tell you, what else can you ex expect when it's uh, midnight strike through Mormons? It is indeed midnight it's supposed on the to be East midnight. Coast. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, we, we designed it this way. Uh, just as Jesus uh, supposedly said in the 70s, based upon all those cross stitches that I saw in my grandmother and my mother's house, we never said it would be easy. We only said it would be worth, worth it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said? So anyway. Um, okay, and Johnny McMurray. Also, Johnny McMurray, welcome to the Telestial Kingdom as well. He was the first one to jump right in. <laughs> Straight up, the, the stream hadn't even started yet, and this guy was joining the chat. So you guys, awesome. awesome. Kudos to you. So first super chat that we got right here said from Steve. You know, throwing up a super chat saying, keeping Brad's gains in my prayers tonight. Oh, sick. Thank you, you know? Steve. You're still not done. <laughs> of course not. No. This is going to take a while. There's a huge steak. Jeez. Just eat little tiny How much do you have too. to gain? He's like a bird. Yeah, and he's been <laughs> walking around. He, he's mouth. been he's, he's been walking around doing the, uh, I can still hear your plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Yeah, 13K steps a day. It's been sweet. Have you yeah. addressed how Brad says sorry yet on Midnight Mormons? Oh, oh, did I do it again? Yeah, he says sorry. Yeah, you say sorry. Yeah, sorry. like a Canadian. You've I never heard an American apologize sorry. for like the first eight years of my life. So you never knew how to say yeah. it. I didn't know. Makes sense. Didn't yeah. know. No, it's so it was too late. It was ingrained. Yeah, so um, you have gotten rid of the about, though. Um, my my family never said that. Let's talk about. <laughs> let's talk about. About. Only you know. some Canadians say that. Okay, There's like cool. different regional accents, kind of like. There's southern accents here in the states, right? Like not okay. everybody says y'all, you know. Mm. Okay. Just like some Canadians say about, but about. it's not everybody. Okay, cool. Rock on, rock on. So, um, anyway, uh, today uh, continuing in the vein of what we were doing yesterday, we're gonna have some fun, and we're going to talk about some archaeological evidences of the Book of Mormon. Before we get started, if you guys have any specifics, we have honestly in this trip to Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia, we covered so many bases. Uh, the Well of Lehi we talked about yesterday. We talked <laughs> A well. About, no, A no well. it's the well. A I'm, well. We're marketing this better. A well. Allegedly. The, 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 the alleged the well, well that Lehi allegedly The well said. with graffiti from Lehi's family. Oh, you know, I just realized, what was Lehi's last name? 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking that's about too. Question. You know, it'd be way easier th- to say the blank family than to say Lehi, Nephi, Sariah, Sam, and Laman Lemuel. Wait, you know? what's the name? And what's the actual name of this? Jacob and Joseph. Uh, uh, Bir Makur. Oh, Lehi's last name was Markur. 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 <laughs> yeah, the, no. the Markur well family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure they spoke Arabic. How wild would that You know, be? it was not Reformed Egyptian. It was Reformed Arabic, mm-hmm. you know. So, so anyway, you guys are doing all kinds of I cool think, stuff. Yeah, I think some fun. Let, let's talk a little bit. I think this will be fun. Let's talk a little bit about Jim. Because Jim, oh, I wish he was Jim-key. here. He's the reason that this all came Yeah, look how cool he is in the middle there. Yeah, look, look at that, that dude. Look at that dude. Uh-huh. Oh so cool. What were your guys' initial thoughts? Jordan, what did you think about Jim? The Mormon Indiana Jones. That's <laughs> obviously. That sums it up. That's, yeah, that's 100%. the first thing. The it, shots it, we got of him, man, coming through that so brush. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's in the trailer, in the yeah. teaser. So before we go any further, um, in the chat, please, guys, if you have any questions, make sure you send us a super chat. If you have any challenges, send us a super chat. If you haven't seen the trailer yet for Stick of Joseph and you want us to play it again, maybe you weren't available in the live stream yesterday, let us know, and we'll play the trailer again one more time because this thing is is bomb diggity. But, um, yeah, it, it, th- this, this whole thing was inspired because... Months ago, Hayden Paul reached out to me via email because we talked about some archaeological stuff on well, I some was, show. It no, no, I, I was actually I was bashing on Quaku going hard on the founding fathers. Remember? Oh, that was it. It and was. I, I ranted to you for like an hour on the phone. You yeah. called me at like 1 a.m. Yes. In the middle of the night because I sent an email like five days before. Uh-huh. And I just get a call at 1 a.m. And for some reason I answered it. And then I didn't go to sleep till like 3 a.m. because we were talking on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> And so, anyway, uh, he had worked previously for Jim Gee in uh, some archaeological expeditions and had suggested maybe we start making some content and collaborating here. Uh, next thing you know, within the year, we're going to Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia following this guy, uh, Jim Gee, who literally is bringing all kinds of new knowledge to the table. We're shattering myths that there was no uh, steel uh, in 7th century BC when Lehi and Nephi would have left Jerusalem. Uh, actually physically walking through areas that some people consider to be the Valley of Lemuel that does indeed have a, you know, a, a stream or what can be considered a body of uh, water flowing through these massive beautiful rock cliffs that are over 2200 uh, feet tall uh, definitely fulfilling the, the, the scriptural um, description of being oh gosh what were they steadfast and immovable I think mm-hmm. was the uh, was the terminology used. And now we're finding all of these wells that have uh, 3,000 years underneath their belt of uh, Bedouin travelers between Jerusalem and the Red Sea passing by there to get water, and the well is still functional. Like, how many 3,000-year-old wells are there just in the world in general? Let alone ones that we can go to and say, you know, if he did travel from Jerusalem to here, um, that he had to have stopped here. Do people are saying, let's play it. They're saying, yeah, let's, let's watch let's it. Play let's watch the trailer. Watch hey, yeah. cool. Hey, and shameless plug right here. If you haven't yet, go to Stick of Joseph on YouTube and subscribe, all right? Okay, be cool. A lot so, more on there, all right? so here we yeah, go. There'll be a ton of stuff on there. It'll yeah, be good. We're going to uh, we're gonna play the trailer now so everybody can see what this project is and what exactly is going on. For 200 years, one book has stood at the center of a rising faith. To believers, it stands as another witness of Jesus Christ. It has changed history and influenced millions. Yet many respected figures challenge its authenticity. We just know too much about Joseph Smith. We know he was a con man in 1820 when he found golden tablets and translated them into scripture and believed that Jesus visited North America. These beliefs are barking mad. So is the Book of Mormon fact or fiction? history or hopes. Well, we want to find out for ourselves. We are the Paul Brothers. With a mission to find the answer to this question, we were led off of internet forums and even out of libraries. Because just as with Lehi, our call to adventure was to depart into the wilderness. Led by archaeologist and researcher Jim Gee, we set out to put ourselves and the Book of Mormon to the test. This is the drop! (laughs) 
blade is from steel, but the handle is from silver. We will put the claims of the Book of Mormon to the test to find out if it is an obvious fraud or if it truly is the stick of Joseph. All right, dude, there we go. Still, Boom, even when I watch that God. now, I'm like, dude, I can't wait to watch that. And then I'm like, oh crap, we have to be the ones to make it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, we have to I'm like, it. that trailer, yeah. that trailer's so cool that I'm like, crap, are we gonna be able to make this thing? Which we will, we will. But uh, yeah, that's fun to watch. And we are in the depths. The of, depths of, of making yeah, that. We, yeah. We did How much really footage did we have to go so through? So we had we had set. So when I put together all of the um, narrative, narrative, footage. it was seven hours and thirty minutes <laughs> uh, total. And then um, we uh, typing away there. Let's see. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. We had seven and a half hours of footage in the narrative. You, the three of us, mm -hmm. uh, knocked it down to five and a half. And then the last week or so, I've nailed it to about three and a half hours. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of narrative. good stuff. It's 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 going to be super so. exciting. Okay, so tell me right now. The title <laughs> of this live stream is Book of Mormon Evidence is Part 2. We've had a lot of fun just letting people come into the chat and mm -hmm. see what's up and so on and so forth right now. But if you were just to have somebody put a gun to your head right now and say, name me the top 10 evidences for the Book of Mormon, what are the first 10 that would come to your mind? Go. I think number one is Nahum. Yeah, the maps of Nahum. Maps of Nahum. Okay, yeah, number two. Which is legit. Uh, number two. Uh, you know what? I ten mean, is excessive. Give me the top five. Yeah. I don't, just give me the top five. Lot. Well, so uh, to go along with that, the land of Bountiful. Um, that okay. Is, that is a big one. Um, in terms of like a cool evidence is the whole raw meat thing we went through. You know, oh, last that one night. was that pretty was awesome. Really cool. Okay. Um, so that is sweet. Yeah. We, yeah, literally sweet, sweet. yeah, sweet. yeah. <laughs> literally sweet You're some um, steak. that's right gosh i don't i don't know there's i i really loved the swords really cool the caves that's something we haven't talked about which is kind of cool that oh. one the, awesome. the caves yeah. dude the caves can, you of of that, can you throw pictures of that into the discord right now can you throw pictures of that Yes, but let's answer. Uh, look at Jonah Barnes. He asked a cool question. Okay, I'm gonna. While you're to looking about. for those pictures, we're gonna talk to Jonah Barnes. What's up, Jonah Barnes? Jonah Barnes, comedic writer at large. Jim Gee looks fit. Was Lehi really an old dude when he ventured through the empty dude. quarter? Thoughts on Mar the Marcour 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 Sen's age. age. Oh, Marcour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is it like beard Marcour? Dude, okay. I like Jonah. Yeah, that's that's funny. That's Yo, funny. So, Jonah, this is actually a super interesting conversation. We actually did a video about this on our YouTube channel about how old um, Lehi, Soraya, and their whole family was. Because mm -hmm. we, we get a few clues in there, right? So, the first interesting clue is that Laman and Lemuel, they're not married. None of none of the sons are married. So yet. but especially the older ones. They're not married yet. What was like the tradition Which in the Jewish Yeah, so culture, traditionally marriage. if you were not married by the time you were twenty in Jewish tradition, then there was something wrong with you. Oh, and geez. and a lot of times rabbis, depending on like what Jewish tradition you're part of, rabbis would force marriage at that point. Mm. Um for you to get married when you're twenty. So brutal. That, if, okay. if, if, if that was the case um, during you know the time of Lehi, which it seemed from the research I've done, it seems like it was then. Then Laman and Lemuel could have been around twenty. You know, like if, if he wasn't married at that point, maybe he was right at that threshold. So if you have Laman and Lemuel around twenty, then we we also know because it says in there that Nephi was exceedingly young. What does exceedingly young mean? I, I don't know exactly. Um, but if you have those, what? makes me think of uh, what is that show with uh, the baseball? John Heater's in it, and they've got like the oh, one yeah. guy who comes up, and he's got his birth, <laughs> his birth certificate. certificate. He's like this Latin dude who's just like thirty, he's like, and he just holds up. I am yeah, twelve. Yeah. It, it says, says I, am I am twelve in crayon with crayon. a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, dude. That's Nephi. So <laughs> yeah, I am twelve because <laughs> he was large in stature though too. So, but then we also learn that once they get to Nahum. Or once they get uh, Ishmael and his daughters, they are old enough to be married. So um, in tradition, as long as you had gone through puberty, so then you were you were old enough to be married. So Nephi probably really? would have had to been at least 14 years old, I'm guessing right there. 
Then the other thing that's super interesting that we get from the text is while they are sojourning in the wilderness, um, uh, Sariah, she has at least two children for sure because we name them, right? You have Joseph and you have Jacob. So she has two children, and if it was a miraculous birth like Abraham's wife or something, like Rebecca, then we probably would have heard something about that, but it doesn't seem like it was. It seemed like it was pretty commonplace. Pretty it wasn't crazy that she, she gave birth. Now, she could have given birth to even more, and this is where an interesting theory comes in that I don't think we've even talked about, but a lot of people think that Ishmael um, was the family that Nephi's sisters married into. Mm-hmm. So... The reason is, is because you don't, when Lehi leaves Jerusalem, he's very clear. I left with my wife. I left with my sons, Laman, Lemuel, Nephi, and or Sam and Nephi. And that's all I left with, right? Okay. But when they get to the new world, it talks about how Nephi has sisters. So two. So either Sariah gave birth to two, at least two girls in the wilderness. Okay. So she gave birth to four while they're out there. Or maybe Nephi's um, Nephi's sisters were married to Ishmael's sons, and that and so they didn't head with them initially when they went in the wilderness, and that's why Nephi didn't name them. But then when they met up, then they kind of joined the crew. So that's an interesting thing. So with all of that said, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that you know you see all the the depictions of of Lehi and his family in the wilderness. They're like these old people, his wife, even in the book of Mormon videos are like super old. And it's just like, no, this was they. Sariah was probably anywhere from like 35 to 45, you know, when Mm -hmm. they were leaving, probably closer to the 35 age. And Lehi probably would have been in a, in a similar, he could have been a little bit older because it was really that, that men married younger. And so at the end of the day, this was like kind of a young family, which, kind of puts the story in a whole different tone instead of like you have these weird kind of Matthew McConaughey failure to launch sons Layman and Lemuel oh that's, savage that's, that's how it normally is portrayed like you watch the book yeah. of videos they're like 30 years old and they're just that kind the of the ones like that made beats. Jordan go inactive yes those ones you know the ones, <laughs> okay cool as he's sitting watching TV in his banana hammock you know what I mean? oh my gosh <laughs> it's, it's, the living it's, scripture it's, yeah the, yeah so uh, terrible so it, terrible it's super cartoon. it's, it's kind of okay. interesting so that's yeah. I personally question. loved Something it. To think you about. mean they didn't have goatees? They didn't have goatees. Uh, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> I don't know if they had goatees. So they definitely could have. What are your the, thoughts on that? One one of my thoughts that I have on this is like Nephi's got to be old enough to be big enough to pull off pretending to be Laban, right? So he can't be oh, like Oh, true 14. that. True that. Mm-hmm. He can't be like 12. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking he's 16 at the youngest Probably I mean, he was closer large to like in stature, though. Like that's yeah. the thing, though. Is he? Yeah, but large in stature, stature does not fix your voice at fourteen. Yeah. You know? Wait, Ooh. sorry. Say that again with your voice. Like he, he had to. large in stature doesn't fix your voice if you're like still. He's got to pretend to be Laban. He's got to pretend to be Laban. If you if you're like voice cracking because yeah. you're like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, you know, you're not going to be able to the pretend to be some real. dude. So I, I think. He had to be closer to like sixteen to eighteen for Nephi. Yeah, that, that's that's my point. major clue for that. Yeah, but yeah. I think I agree with you on everything you're saying about Lehi and Sariah, especially. Yeah, yeah. So we got a couple of super chat questions here, really fast. First off, Jacob H says, "Could Lehi have been polygamous?" You know, that was a thing there's, in ancient Israel. Um, I, don't I mean, see there's any, no evidence. I don't for see it. any record of it, though. You know, I guess he could have been in the sense of like. That was a thing back then, okay? Abraham mm-hmm. was, you know, I'm not saying it was the same time period as Abraham, mm-hmm. right? Okay, but I, there, there was Solomon, there was David, you know, uh, also wealthy. Was, was Abraham polygamous? Just because he had Abraham? a wife with his handmaiden, or a son with his handmaiden, didn't mean he was polygamous. And Ketra also. Ketra? Did, yeah, his third mm-hmm. wife. That's kind of a crazy name that needs to come back. Ketera. Ketera. It's, it's a cool, cool name. name. Like, what's up, Ketera? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, there was a girl uh, that my buddy dated named Rivka that I always thought Rivka. had a cool name. <laughs> Isn't yeah, that, that one was, of the chosen? I think I think it was a Hebraic name, if I was yeah. mistaken. Yeah. But anyway, minor prophet Ian Malcolm, who has one of the coolest avatars I have seen on YouTube. He's I hope gangster. that's... Is that the guy from Jurassic Park, or is that just an AI cool guy photo? I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, have the brothers ever looked into the ancient Ammon core from Egypt known for lopping off the arms of their enemies and giving them to the king? That I have familiar. seen that there were limbs presented to the king, especially in ancient hieroglyphs. 
um, of of conquest Damn where cool. limbs were given, hmm. and some people have tried to you know um, uh, connect this. With hey, the send, story a of Anna. send a link. Send a link in the in in the chat, minor prophet. E. I don't Malcolm, know if we'll you can if in this chat. Oh, you can't send um, links or ju- or just uh, yeah. I think it, it's because you could said the p word. And ever since, they, <laughs> ever since they passed COPPA, I yeah. think the ability to send links in Freaking the chat is one of the things everything. that you can't do. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, yeah, thank you, Minor Prophet Ian Malcolm. So anyway, your top five was Map of Nahum, mm-hmm. was Raw Meat in the Desert, was three... Bountiful. Uh, bountiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what was four and five again? Uh, the caves are pretty cool. Oh, do you have the caves in the yeah, chat I'm yet? Yeah, I'm sending it right okay. now. Okay, I'm yeah. busting this out of the Discord. At this okay. Moment. You know, I've thought about if we, instead of be, having a Patreon, having a Subscribestar, and part of Subscribestar is you have to have a community chat that mm-hmm. uh, members could participate in. Everybody in the chat, let me know right now. Uh, first, make sure you like this stream. Okay, it really helps get our channel out there and get in front of other people. Tells all the algorithms that you appreciate what we're putting down. So please make sure that you like this chat. Everybody right now, just stop what you're doing and like the chat. Okay. And also, excuse me, if you could let us know in the chat, do you guys, uh, would you be interested in a discord that would be available to um, friends of the show and uh, members and so on and so forth? who wanted to be able to talk on Discord, and we would be able to dip into it on occasion, see what's up. You might be able to get a preview on occasion of stuff we're doing. If you would be interested in uh, participating in Discord, please let mm-hmm. us know, because that could be kind of cool as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, Dean Schwenk says, Chris, come home. Come back home. Yes, Chris, come back home. It was awesome. You know what I'm saying? And Diamond Dave says, done. Now, he's a big gamer, so I wouldn't be surprised if he dug the Discord. So anyway, um, here we are. Uh, you've got pictures. Wow, yeah, right here. Okay, so here's picture number one. And describe what we're seeing. And so right here, we're about, uh, what would you say, like 300 yards from the walls of Jerusalem? Uh, 300, maybe 500? It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like yeah. that. So, so honestly, not too far away. And actually, we're pretty close to a place called uh, the Mount of Zion. Mount, Mount, Mount Zion. Zion. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mount Zion. Which in antiquity was like a neighborhood of the rich people. It was like Beverly Hills. Okay. But for the Jews. Yeah, okay. Rock on. Yeah. Beverly <laughs> Jewish Hills. <laughs> no, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so it's kind of where rich people were, and it's a possible place for where Laban could have lived, being that he was a man of great importance, was guarding stuff. Because you know. it's where the rich people have lived in Jerusalem for like a Forever. very long so time. So actually, uh, before you continue, Caiaphas actually lived there. And uh, next time next time we're in Jerusalem, guys, we have to have some extra days because we were in we were next to some really cool stuff that I, I went on when I was with Jim the first time. But like Caiaphas's palace where Peter denies Christ is on that hill. Real, they yes. know that's the yeah. place. Yes. So it's Caiaphas's palace. You can walk up the ancient <laughs> stair, the steps up to it um, that existed at the time of Christ. And there's a courtyard out front that looks in to the main like king area or like the main um, yeah. meeting area. And so in the New Testament, right, it talks about how Peter, he's on the steps. So all the other accounts, it says he denied him. But there's one account. I can't remember in which uh, which gospel it is. But it says that he denies him and then he makes eye contact with Christ. Really? And then he remembers it. And I can't mm. remember which one. And so it doesn't make sense. Oh, somebody find that, please. Place. Are you on that, Jackson? Say again. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look for it while Jackson continues to explain uh, the whole caves thing. But, uh, yeah, so Caiaphas' palace is awesome. And in there, you see the pit where Jesus was put, where it fulfills a prophecy that he will be neck deep in the mire, which essentially was one thing they would do to torture people is they tie a rope to him and they put him in a hole of, like, defecation, of just, like, sewage. Really? Yeah, and they would just – they would – uh, put them down enough where they would be hanging and it was really uncomfortable, but they just keep it right under their chin. It was disgusting, right? So that Whoa. happened to Christ while he's there, and um, yeah, there's it, it's a really cool place. So that's who lived on Mount Zion at the time of Christ is Caiaphas, mm-hmm. who was a religious, powerful leader, and who was Laban. He was someone who was holding very important religious artifacts and was also very rich, right? And okay. so it's a perfect place, and and we do know. Because we have found artifacts that date back to um, the first Babylonian 
captivity, which is a time of Lehi, that uh, show that wealthy people did live on there. So they've excavated palaces and things like that that date to that time. So continue, Jack, mm-hmm. and I'll look for that. So scripture. yeah, this all comes into play in the early chapters of the Book of Mormon, obviously when Nephi, Laman, Lemuel, and Sam go to retrieve the brass plates. And first to decide who would go, um, they did something called casting lots. Now, uh, we we did a video separate on our channel talking about casting lots and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but Jordan, how would what? How do you even cast lots, bro? You want me to talk about casting? Dude, lots? teach me how do I, how do I cast? And then lots? I got the video <laughs> of Mount Zion. So Kay. yeah. So, so this is this is actually su- I think this is super cool and intriguing that for. Oh whoops! Okay. Sorry. Wow, bro. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> I <I'm> just <laughs> keep going. <laughs> um, <laughs> is like dating way, 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 way back. They uh, they use dice. So it's usually carved out of camel bone or something like that. And the dice look exactly like the dice we use in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or who's the we? Anywhere, who's it, the we? Anywhere else. <laughs> they, they. <laughs> they or anywhere they. else. We use it Wendover in Utah. Oh, we use Wendover. Wendover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wendover. <laughs> um, and, and basically you would cast lots and whatever, like, uh, if it landed on seven, that meant whatever you were casting lots for was God's will. Uh, so like Nephi and his brothers went down, uh, and cast lots and whichever one landed on seven was the one to go up and, and, uh, try and get the plates from Laban. So exactly. that happened throughout the Bible, casting lots throughout history that, people would use dice to determine God's will. I think that's so interesting. It is yeah. very interesting. So now Snagret, Snagret, hold your horses, Snagret. bro. We're just doing it. He I says, he says, I love this content. You already did this video uh, with Nephi Geet. You're right about casting lots, but something you haven't seen yet that nobody has seen yet is this right here, bro. So before you start getting judgy, all right, Snagret, <laughs> Just slow yeah, you your roll, you know dog. Everything, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? To educate the people that don't already know everything. Yeah. <laughs> we just yeah, not everyone. Not everyone can be a snagrit. Yeah, Anyways, okay. <laughs> so, so they cast lots. Layman obviously falls on him. He gives a half-hearted attempt, goes in, and obviously gets kicked out. So then they're like, "Yo, let's go to the land of our inheritance. Grab all of our gold, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and try to trade it for the brass plates." And so they go up. Obviously, Laban's like, "Bro, you bring all this stuff to me." get out i'm gonna kill you and take your stuff and so they run and then it says and it came to pass that we did flee before the servants of laban (coughs) and it came to pass that we fled into the wilderness and the servants of laban did not overtake us and we hid ourselves in the cavity of a rock right yeah and it just so happens that not too far from this location where it's very plausible that laban would have lived um, and would have been guarding the brass plates are these cavities in a rock okay okay so i'm actually going to pause you right there so that the uh the audience can see it yeah now this is going to be really brief so i'm going to have to uh i'm going to have to just play it slowly but if we stop right there so yeah that's mount zion Mm -hmm. okay and that is the mount what's really interesting is jordan noticed this because i think you had a relative that noticed this and said the houses are built instead of in the valleys here like they are in america and the mountaintops being empty yeah it's that the homes are on the mountaintops and the valleys are empty so the area that was called hell is literally only a football field to the left of this picture okay and that's where they would burn all the trash back in roman times and that was where jesus christ basically told people you know this is what like hell is like where they burn all the trash and it smells bad and it's horrible and it's gross and it's unsanitary and so on and so forth Mm. um but this is mount zion this is where the wealthy people lived okay and so just down literally this street less than i don't know four or five football fields you get this area that was outside of the city walls at the time that had these and it's super intriguing i'm going to pull up this other picture it had these um which were uh now you can't really see them as well okay But do you see that little cavity in that rock right there? This isn't just a Mormon cope trying to dig something out of nothing. The erosion and then also the building of multiple amphitheaters and things like that have actually made it so that these caves that used to be much larger and deeper and deeper. Okay, people, homeless people were living in there when we were there. (laughs) 
Okay, like I mean, I mean, there was. Oh, it smelled like pee so yeah. bad. It was, but it was these disgusting. used to be disgusting. <laughs> yeah, Card made me go back in there Jackson. with the camera, bro. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, yeah, well, you did it. You did it, bro. <laughs> On his hands and knees, yeah. you yeah, took Card's direction. Like, don't That's don't why be, a, good don't be a baby. Crawl up in there. And I'm <laughs> you like, know what I'm saying? I wonder if it smelled this bad of piss back in 600 BC. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it was lame and doing. Yeah, it. you guys made it in there, and it was intriguing because do we have any photos of you guys actually getting in there? Because these limestone cave entrances. We're really intrigued. You actually could hide out in there, and yeah. then there was they multiple. They actually connected there was, together back there. If you go back far enough, they actually connected together, and in, in the back it was cool. And that would have been against the direction of travel if you were just trying to get away and then make it down to the main road. You know what I'm saying? So there's all these limestone caves that are dotting the hillsides outside of Jerusalem, and now they're half filled in with dirt, and the topography has changed a little bit. But literally, it's like. There's cavities of rocks right outside that human beings currently are sleeping in or homeless people currently hiding in, I guess you could call it. And it's like literally right outside the city walls. And there, there's no way that Joseph Smith was trans like this again. We don't have a Kilroy was here. We don't have a, you know, Nephi was here etched into the wall or anything. But these are topographies and details that there's no way a 14-year-old farm boy would have known about in 1820. Like, I mean, he didn't even know that the city was walled. I didn't know about this, and I had the internet and have been yeah. LDS <laughs> for years. Like, I, yeah. I didn't recognize, oh my gosh, there's caverns directly outside of Jerusalem. This was super awesome to see. Okay, so we got a super chat here. Thank you very much for the super chat from, who's it say, who's it say, who's it say? Samuel Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent, like Yves Saint Laurent, Samuel YSL, Saint Laurent. says, uh, anyway, let's be honest now. Layman and Lamuel were angry because if you remember the church picture, Nephi has that nicely work in leftover G from Joseph. That's why he was strong and could throw lots. <laughs> okay, cool. Who knows? Maybe he had the one that was handed down from Esau. True. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that could be cool. So I found that scripture. Okay, hit Christ. it. What's so, the script? So I actually sent you. Let's. I sent a couple of pictures in the Discord of Caiaphas's palace, so we can kind of see. Oh, shut up! Like. Really? So okay. Look at the stair. The stair one first. Okay, so when you go up this so big up. long road, and you can see my mouse on the screen, up yeah. to Mount Zion, right about there. Yeah. So it's a little okay. farther up. Yeah. But you continue. say there's another picture here that our audience is going to be able yeah. to see. So Boom shakalaka. Yeah, it's kind of little pictures yeah, for it's ants. Little, I got it off. Okay. Yeah. Boom, so shagalaka. those stairs right there lead up to Caiaphas's palace, and those are like the stairs that Peter would have walked up um, when he was was going to the courtyard really? of Holy Christ, which is really cool, and you can walk up them today, dude. Um, wow. So allegedly, that's really right? Allegedly, this <laughs> yeah. is all allegedly. And now go to the next picture <laughs> that I sent. Okay. Uh, Caiaphas's palace. <laughs> Why'd you cut to me? <laughs> because you said allegedly. <laughs> no, I didn't. Brad did. Yeah, oh, see, so usually though, the laughed. person that says allegedly is you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, just I heard in my headphones, I was like, "There's a doubter, got to be Jordan." <laughs> no, I just totally get it. Just get it. I love how we like have a whipping boy. Yeah. Yo, you love. I'm not that? a whipping okay. boy. So uh, okay. now you look at this. This is kind of the beginning of the court. Yard. It's not a good picture. I didn't. Oh, I couldn't shoot. find Here a good picture online of it. Um, so in the in Luke, which Luke is cool. The thing that's cool about Luke is that uh, Luke and I learned this actually from Come Follow Me in our Sunday school this last week. But Luke, yeah. he was um, he was Paul's like buddy, and he did, he wasn't a he wasn't a Christian when Christ was alive, so he never met Christ. And so his account and why we have such deep accounts, for example, of Christ's birth and everything is because he just interviewed everybody. Right. So he got accounts from other people. So he interviewed Mary, the mother of Jesus. And that's why we have the whole story of Christ's birth in Luke. Right. And so you get some interesting things. And so I think that this detail um, that is in Luke is there because he actually interviewed Peter about how it happened instead of oh. you know the disciples kind of just recounting it from their own memory Dang. or whatever and so if you read in luke chapter 22 Ooh, um, i gotta pull this up verse yeah. uh 60 we'll start there okay so lds scripture luke you said 26 oh, 60 no we'll actually start with um, 56. We'll start 2256. 2256. Okay, so here we go. It says, and the following. So, so in 55, actually, it says, And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, 
and were set down together. Peter sat down among them. So it's interesting because you go to the courtyard and then there's this long hall and then there's like a, the place, right? That mm-hmm. is like the gathering area. So it, yeah, like it okay. fits perfectly. It's really cool. And then it said, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly look upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him saying, woman, I know him not. And after a while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. (coughs) Sorry. And immediately while he spake, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Ooh, how would he have known that? Yeah, yeah unless no, somebody yeah. saw that. Okay. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Oh Dude, God. doesn't that hit you in the heart right there? Dude, like, yeah. think about the Savior of the world being just ridiculed, and you're there, and you deny him, and he makes eye contact with you. Oh. And then you remember that. Like, that is why he's wi- weeping bitterly. You know, like, that is a powerful, mm. powerful moment. And oh, that's, that's that what you get brutal. when you go to the Holy Land. And that's why we have, Dude, we have so we many places go back, we didn't bro. go. I know, there's so We're many places. Back. Wait, and so, wait, well, okay, I just, need to, I just need to retrace our steps here. For There's uh-huh. going to be some people that are uh, jumping into live stream. That, that you, s- you were pointing out that, uh, and, and, and here's, the, here's the, the trail and the pictures, okay? Yeah. At the bottom of Mount Zion, there's caves. which is most likely where Laban's palace would have been. And we know that the brothers of Nephi, Laban and Lemuel, escaped from Laban's palace, which would have had to have been within five to ten football fields of this spot you're standing right here. Okay, And this spot you're standing right here is in front of those big caves that you can see in the back. Now, they look diminutive right now, but there's actually a bunch of these cavities in the rock that have now been kind of filled with erosion. But homeless people still camp out in there and they still live there. There's tons of graffiti. Obviously, been human um, activity in there for thousands of years. And um, these limestone caves really fulfill that... Um, that description of, you know, hiding uh, in a cavity of a being rock. hiding in the cavity of a rock before they draw lots and all that other stuff. Right. And if you can see right here, OK, this is the view from that exact cavity standing right in front of that cavity back towards what is Mount Zion. And in this video really fast that we can just show everybody here, you'll notice that um we're standing in front of that cavity of a rock, and then there is Mount Zion, where you say Caiaphas's palace was. Palace was. And if at we the go, time of Christ. yeah, at the time of Christ. And so, if we go back now to um, the pictures you just showed us here, yeah. that's the pathway up to Caiaphas's, and there is the area. And this pathway is straight enough that apparently, during the trial. Christ could have made eye contact with Peter, is what you're saying. Yeah, there's a courtyard out there, and it says in Luke, which, you know, Luke most likely interviewed all of the disciples individually and got all their accounts and put it in his account. He says that Christ looked at Peter. They made eye contact. I mean, you just assume that they would make eye contact because Hmm. Peter saw that he looked at him. Could you imagine the whole feed my sheep three times after that, after (sighs) Christ came back? Now I get why he went fishing, bro. He was like, bro, I'm sad. Let me go back (laughs) to what I know is is good. Let me catch some fish, bro. For sure. Jeez, this was deep and heavy. Peter's legendary, man. I I love him. What a comeback, dude. Yeah. What a a comeback story. For real. I know. Wait, how is it a comeback story? Dude. Well, because Why? because he freaking from denying Christ <laughs> to to getting crucified upside down. You mean the first for pope Christ. for his testimony? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and God. dude, the thing that's interesting, and I, I point this, I've talked about this. I think I gave a talk about this in church one time, is that honestly the difference be, be, between Peter and Judas. Now, obviously, Judas did a heinous thing, but I, I dude and Jim actually, I'll, I'll share this theory because I want to hear what other people's thoughts are. Hmm. Jim doesn't think yeah. that Ju- Judas really like knew what he was doing, that he like really was trying to betray Christ. Psh, and fool. the reason he believes I'm losing that, respect so for his, Jim with so his, every <laughs> passing word. So his no. theory, his theory is this, um, that Judas, he was in charge of the purse, right? So he was in charge of making sure everyone had money. They were in Jerusalem at the time of the Passover, which meant 
money time. It was time to pay taxes. And he was in charge of paying taxes for all 12 of them. Right. Oh, and and the yeah. whole crew, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's probably nervous because they're always living, you know, without purse or script. And so what he believes happens is how many times in the New Testament does Jesus get like attacked by a throng of people who are angry and then he disappears? And it just says he that escaped. Jesus disappears. He escapes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so Jim Jim's theory is he's like, it's possible that maybe Judas in, in a way to make money was hoping was hoping for another one of those where he could he could get Christ in a place and then he would eventually just escape but he got all the 30 he got the 30 shekels you know what I mean oh, he was able to pay taxes which is kind of interesting I don't I don't know if I completely buy into that but I do think that Judas gets a way worse rap because like when you read the narrative he's like so Jesus in there he says so he he goes and he talks to some people and they're like he's like they're like, uh, so wait, sell, sell us, sell us Jesus. And he's like, okay, for this much, he doesn't do it yet though. Right. Okay. And then he goes to the last supper and then Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me. And then he looks at Judas and he says, go and do it. Well, and so then Jesus tells them to go and betray him. He says, what, whatever thou what do is. Okay. Do so it there's, quickly, quickly, there's something right? interesting too. Snagret just was talking in the, in the comments Snaggart's about the thugs. Sna- yeah, Snaggret. <laughs> and uh, he just, watch it's he a just diminutive said, redheaded kid in like Florida. <laughs> it's like 14 years old. And we're calling him <laughs> thug. <laughs> <you know? laughs> like, okay. So right. he believes that uh, Peter was told to deny Christ three times. And he cried bitterly because he couldn't defend Christ in that moment. Who does he think? Uh, who, what does he think? Who told him? Christ, Christ did. Christ oh, did. Christ was telling him. Yeah, when Christ said, yeah, you so at the time, it times. wasn't. It wasn't a prediction. The, yeah, a yeah there's a theory that's, that's popular. Uh, oh, that's, that's what some people believe. Yeah, that's a really. That's I am not in that camp. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't so believe either. it either. Okay. But that's uh, super interesting. But the whole Judas thing, though, like it's just weird to me because I like, think if you're in Judas's position, he hasn't actually done it yet. He hasn't actually betrayed him. Mm-hmm. He went and talked to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then he's at dinner, and Jesus is like, "The one that I give this." piece of bread to is the one that's going to go betray me and then he gives him the bread and says go and do it quickly whatever you do do it quickly yeah and so like judas is probably like what like I, whatever he his plan was up to that point it seemed to be very confirmed by jesus see this is too hippie doing. for me i prefer the it's binary of thinking he was just bad and i can blame all the emotional <laughs> angst on uh, him and then well, say that i never would have done anything remotely close <laughs> yeah. he, he is then, just uh, one comfy. step away from yeah, unwashing you yeah <laughs> you know so um now you bring up a really good point when you mentioned the very famous painting that most of us are familiar with uh it was da vinci's uh the last supper right Mm-hmm. Uh, but you were talking earlier that that's not the way it was, and there's a lot of misconceptions no, because dude, of I Israeli temples yeah. only ever had people Israeli Israeli tables only ever had people sitting on one side. Mm-hmm. That's how it always, works. yeah, they oh, were yeah, sitting across funny. from each other. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, so that's so weird that's if you think about it. <laughs> okay, well, and then you said that described a little bit more how he could have laid upon his breast or something like yeah. that. Yeah, triclidium. What was that? Yeah, the triclidium. That was the word I was looking for. The triclidium. Triclidium. Yeah. So yeah. tell yeah, us about the triclidium. Des- describe what a triclidium is. So if you guys remember, at the very end of our teaser, we have a dope shot taken by Jordan. Give, oh, it give some hype in the chat for Jordan. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jim is like laying on his left side, right, on uh, just like one of those Bedouin mats, yeah. right? And basically how they would sit, uh, triclidium, obviously. I think that's in the trailer. I'm going to look for it. Yeah, yeah hold it's it at the very end. The, okay. yeah. um, the, the fire is Correct me the if the I'm wrong. Format. They sit, uh, obviously, in a triangle, right? Uh, it's not a triangle. Well, like. It's uh, basically uh, a right angle. It's almost idea. like a square. It's like a square without one side. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or a so rectangle without one side. There's three sides. But they're all leaning on their left side, right? Mm-hmm. And they would use their right hand to eat. And so it would be a lot. So if we were in a triclidium, right? Mm-hmm. We'd be <coughs> leaning like this on the table and just eating like this. And we'd be talking. And this is what's so interesting because you see pictures a lot of times of. Uh, what's his name? Peter. Or no, yeah. Peter John. leans in. No, John. You see pictures of John. You be Jesus real quick. And John's like this. You know, yeah. because in it, it says that he leaned into Jesus' breast and asked him. I can't remember what he asked him. Is it? Is that where he says, uh, uh, which of us is Will it be I? Will it be I, Lord? Yeah. yeah. So, he leans. so 
that's really weird if you're all just sitting in a chair and then John leans on Jesus's chest and it's like, is it me? <laughs> you know, like it's really yeah. weird. Hi. But if I'm we're chilling problem, like this me. and Jesus is behind you and I'm John, him leaning into him like this is way more natural. That's him leaning into his breast because he's yeah. not actually sitting in a chair. He's leaning down. So They're this is like, the, so like, like this little uh, segment with Jim Gee right here mm-hmm. is kind of how they actually did it. So he leans in and, and like whispers to Jesus and that's like in his chest because they're both kind of leaning that way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, Leonardo da Vinci is a heretic and should no. be <laughs> lost to history. Should be. <laughs> lost. Well, here's, here's my, I, okay. I just loved the whole trip was full of these little things that helped me better understand. I think we, and I, without spoiling a future episode of Midnight Mormons uh, featuring us, we, we really... Spoil away, dog. We can, <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll just, 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 just hit it. Say what you want to say, man. Blabber it, baby. So it was just full of so many things that, that change your perspective on Scripture. You know, so many people who just read the Bible and believe... The Bible is the the only word of God, and we must listen to every single word of it like it was written by God. I think that's so silly. Um, but it's the idea, you know, Christ talking about hell. Like you mentioned earlier, the valley of hell right outside of Jerusalem back then is where they burned trash. And so yeah. he was he was comparing things that people knew then that we don't know now. And so... Um, going over there and learning all of the things that they talked about back then and all the th- how they did things, it just it it brought a new a new light. You know, and you know something else yeah. is I, I we just got asked in the chat um, uh, if we have you know I- any other examples, and I forgot I've got the Herodian lamp. Like wh- you you speak Jordan of how when you actually see. The, the the valley and you actually step on the stones and you see the house um i was yeah. intrigued about what i learned about just the herodian land go grab it we'll, we'll yeah talk should for i go, a little okay. bit. go grab it and show give it. me yeah. two seconds i'm gonna go run and grab this thing from we'll the, talk the behind safe. your back yeah, yeah we're definitely going to talk about you bro. okay so yeah. it's going to be <laughs> okay so hold on <laughs> hurry <laughs> no, yeah so you all right there it's going to be on you guys but all yeah, right back um, in a flash so just as you're going out and getting that stuff, I back to the Book of Mormon evidences. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really amazing because, like, as Jim Bennett has said on the show before, anyone who says there's no archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon has to ignore the first 40 pages mm-hmm. because we actually know where those ones happened. <clears throat> and I felt it while we were there and while we were going through and looking at all of these things. The fact that those caverns are right near the walls of Jerusalem and that... Those are mentioned in the Book of Mormon. Like, how would Joseph Smith have known that? What we talked about with Nahum, that there is this area in exactly where Nephi describes it that is perfectly lined up with where his family would have gone. And even Bountiful itself is such an anomaly in the area that it lands in, you know, that I think there's plenty of geographical evidence that lines up with Nephi's account in a really, really beautiful way. That if anyone is willing to look for any evidence of the Book of Mormon, they will find it. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know that you can necessarily say, hey, look, this is why you should believe in the Book right. of Mormon. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that would actually be well, a wise and, way to go about and it. And talk, you know, Chris Murphy here, obviously a critic. Um, <laughs> and and that's, that's totally... <laughs> no, he's not. That's that's totally okay. I, I am also a, a critic. Um, but I'm a critic. And there's too. no, there's no proof. Everyone should be. Critic of yeah, what? Everyone should be the of the book, church, of the church, of the book, of book of Mormon, of all of it. We should everything all be you believe. Is criticize it. But dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just can't. I just keep But going. to to approach this, um, you know, we all know Cardin loves the clickbaity stuff. There's no proof that the Book of Mormon happened. There, there can't be. There's no proof that the spiritual that proof that the things happened. Hanson Five model, but that's individual. In collective that's witness, a, you can't share that with anyone. <laughs> in the else. Bi- yeah, right. There's no, there's no proof of of things that happened in the Bible. You know, there there's no proof that Christ existed. There's no proof. Like a hundred hundred percent proof. Mm-hmm. There's evidences, mm-hmm. and that's what we went over to find are the evidences. Right. There's, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I don't. Uh, uh, like it's been said many times in this thing, I'm not very, I'm not active in the church, um, and but but going here and being okay with 
the Book of Mormon having truths or not having truths, uh, you know, going through that whole thing, I think is a really earnest. And what I want to pull out of this this series is helping people understand that it's okay if the Book of Mormon has truths. That doesn't mean you have to accept Joseph Smith as a prophet. That doesn't mean you have to accept the church or be baptized or anything like that. Incorrect, but, but continue. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but to accept that the Book of Mormon has truths is significant to history. It's significant to, to Christianity mm -hmm. uh, in a whole. It's significant to a, a belief in Christ. Um, and I think that that's something I personally want to pull out of, of the series and, and yeah. try and help portray. Anyway. Yeah. No, d that, I, I think that's, that's money and exactly, exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, we had a sweet super chat, really interesting question. And oh. there's one we were actually talking about okay. today. And then I got the Herodian lamp right okay. here. Ooh. So yeah. Ooh. Yeah. The, su the super chat is actually a great subject. Okay. All right. Wait, let's all answer on three. But what we think, all Kay. right? Okay. One, two, three. Yes. Yes. And if you don't <laughs> oh, believe, you're a lazy no, learner. No. No. no so <laughs> the thing that's super interesting, and I'm going to see if I can find the link to it, but Family Search also seems to agree because when you go on Family Search and you look up Jesus of Nazareth, super interesting. he's married to Mary Magdalene and they have three children. And I'm going to find that link so we can prove it here on that it shows that. Which I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if the church is aware of that and they just like leave it there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or if just some random person put it in, but it's there and it's always been there. So I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna look it up. So Okay, cool. So here was one that I totally liked and and supremely enjoyed. Okay, is we all remember when we were kids watching, you know, the original OG gangster um uh, Parable of the Ten Virgins, right? Mm -hmm. and they talk about the oil and the lamps. This is like one of the old school VHS gangster original Parable of the Ten Virgins, right? And what's interesting is they have these lamps, and these ones are actually a little bit more historically accurate, and I appreciate it, because usually they have like these big, beautiful, like European vases with the long necks that pour the oil because they, they imagine those kind of storage techniques. They didn't realize that actually the lamps were very small. And they can only hold a certain amount. And either it would spoil or else there's a million other things. That would, it's heavy to carry around large quantities of oil. So generally, the like serving size, for lack of a better term, of oil was actually very small. And I like how you guys said originally that, you know, a testimony is something that cannot be shared. And sometimes our, our, our disconnection from the actual physical objects, like lamps themselves, uh, that are part of the parable... Make it so we don't understand them as well. And that if we apply modern presentist storage uh, protocols and objects, it kind of makes the 10 virgins didn't share the oil with their friends look kind of what? Like a little stingy. You know what I'm saying? And we don't realize that actually it cannot be shared. There's only enough for several hours. You cannot give some of your testimony to somebody else. It's like a physical impossibility. It is like oil and lamps. And so I was actually able to get some. It's kind of cool because they have all the registration numbers on the bottom if you purchase antiquities. It's like hardcore to get in uh, uh, to purchase antiquities. But this one is actually uh, a lamp from that era. Okay. Now, this one actually was kind of cool, and I liked it more than the first century Herodian ones. Wait a ones. second. What? Does it have little snagrets on it? Oh, it kind of does. It has like a little snagret right there. <laughs> is that you what know? a snagret is? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, what yeah, the snagret is a profile looks like? Is a snagret a thing? That's what his profile oh my picture gosh. looks like, dude. Yeah, go to snagret's profile. <laughs> I need to see that. Yeah, that is really funny. Here, let's see if I can get it any closer. Oh, yeah, it Here is. We are. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> you know? So, anyway... um. What's awesome. so interesting is this one was very detailed. Uh, maybe a wealthier person had it or some kind of merchant, but you can still see all the char marks and everything like that. But um, this is small. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah. not these big behemoth lamps. I don't know. Okay? Your hands are pretty giant. That's true. That's <laughs> okay, true. Okay, Donald Trump. And <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump. I like it. That's funny. Huge hands. <laughs> My hands are huge. <laughs> you know? Huge. Um, but I, I remember seeing this and just thinking... You know, I'm not blaming the artists, saying they were stupid or they were naive because they were working with the best that they had, you know. But nothing compares to being able to actually hold it and see it and touch it and feel it in first person and thinking, wow, 
you know, you burn through this in two or three hours, you got another refill and then that's it. And that refill can't be spread among seven other people. And you're not stingy if you say, quick, go buy, get your own. And, and I imagine that's kind of actually how we will be in the last days when Jesus Christ comes, when AI has gotten so bad that we can't tell the difference between the deep fakes and the real things. And we have to rely upon the spirit to understand what is real and what is fake. You know, that connection with God is something that cannot all of a sudden just be administered and given to others. It comes through preparation and uh, repetition and thought and prayer and so on and so forth. So, yeah, this one's pretty cool. In fact, maybe one of the times we'll do some kind of cool event with Jim Gee in which you guys can see him. I'm going to put this one up a little bit closer again. And then, yeah, I'm going to look and see if there is a snagger on it. Okay, so you can really see the stuff right there. And hold on. If everybody looks, yeah, that is kind of a snagger. This one right here. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the bottom left one. Oh my gosh, it looks just like Snagret. It really, it does. really does, man. That's Dude, funny. that is lamp. funny. So this one is actually, interestingly enough, oh, if and, I, uh, just a fascinating thing that we just found. Okay, in what family search about the was Jesus married? Oh, I saw this. Yeah, my buddy, text, who's a CHP you officer, you know what I'm saying? Shout out, Officer Glauser. Uh, showed me this in church the other day. Uh, can you put it up on the screen, yeah, or do I'm I need to pull it up? I'm yeah, we're, sen I'm we're sending text you the link. I just tensed the link, and, and you just texted me the link. the link. Yeah, I tensed it. I <laughs> sorry, tensed guys. it. Sorry, I'm not perfect. Okay, come on, dude. Perfect. You just talk. Better. These super chats have been awesome. That's two fifty from the same lady as Carolyn, giving you two. Oh, dude, Carolyn. She gave you another fifty yesterday too. She's a baller. Yeah, she is a baller, dude. We got to use some of her music. Yeah, I have has. She, Carolyn, have you received? Oh my gosh, look at this. Yeah, look. Okay, I'm going to move this so that more people can see it on screen, but this is intriguing. Holy smoke. Tell us what Look at the profile at picture. The profile picture <laughs> is of a white male from the U from the United States. Looks like Europe. Uh, maybe, no, maybe easily Danish. Easily Danish. Danish. Yeah. Uh, SoCal, Danish. Christ Orange County. Danish. He looks mostly like you, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, look at, now look uh, at spouse. Ba -boom. Now look, look at, at click on spouse. <laughs> click on spouse. Where Where is that? 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 Uh, uh, what the heck? Why isn't it showing? It was normally in the top bar. Uh, somewhere else. Okay, mm. click on view Sounds tree. Made up, you guys. Click on view tree. In yeah, that this is always kind of cool. Is this like when somebody got a hold of Russell M. Nelson's membership number and they sent in on the quitmormon.org as like a troll or something like that? Oh, shoot. oh that's your family. Oh, no. Yeah, hold on. That's my whole family tree. Hold yeah, we don't want here. people to know your family. <laughs> but no, but I've got to go back to Imagine okay, if so someone just freaking doxing yourself. Executing you. Gangster mode, <laughs> finding his like 11th well, it, I'm aunt just getting, I'm just getting pin wheels, man. Okay, so go to a view relationship. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. No, That'll no, just show no. you how you're related to Jesus. Jesus. Hold on. <laughs> it says none. It's none. like, yeah. you yeah. are a son of the covenant. What the heck? I'm on my phone. <laughs> oh, look it just at this. lets yeah, me click on Yeah, I'm not, yeah, not Christ-like enough. It appears your tree does not have enough generations to find a share. Just, just show your phone. Hayden. Show your just phone, Hayden. Hayden. Yeah, oh, show your phone. Show on my yeah, phone. just show on the phone, yeah. Okay, I'm showing you on my phone. Yeah, hey. freak out at me. Hayden, just show it on your phone, bro. i you physically. Right here. Who does it say his dad is? Jesus Christ. Elohim. Well, now, yeah, it's got to cover up the faces. That's so too close. Let, look away from the camera, guys. Hide your faces. There we are. There we are. There, <laughs> there we are. Hide your faces from the Lord. So Hide crazy. your faces. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we'll go to spouse. If you just cover your face, Mary with a, Magdalene. Wow, Mary Magdalene. look at that. Go, wait, go to parents. Go to parents. If Family search. Must just be cover official. your face like this, and it won't be able to focus on you. Parents. Oh, it has his adopted father, obviously, Joseph. Oh, oh interesting. No. It doesn't have. Where are the kids? Because I know it has kids, but I can't see how to get there on Family Search. Do we have any Family Search gurus? Yeah, she Jonah Barnes. Where's Jonah Barnes when we need him? Why aren't you in the studio, Jonah? I just decided to talk like a huh. pirate right then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, I've um, got a it's couple of super late. chats here that we're going to address really fast. Um, first off, Carolyn Wright Games Music says. Um, oh, wait. We already did, did that one. We yep. did that one. Okay, so Samuel Sultan. St. Laurent has again graced us with his presence in the chat and says gold plates in a stone box, plates of gold, stone tablets in a gold case. Ark, y'all need Don Bradley. Yeah, that's, that's a awesome. killer yeah, that's book. We need to get Don Bradley on I to talk his, about I the got his phone number. Arc. I got his phone number. Oh, yeah, you got his yeah, yeah, Let's do it. Dude. Well, yeah. well, what's he going to say? Is this that whole the North American Ark idea was mm, what was no. buried in the Hill Cumorah? Okay, why well, do we yeah, need, yeah, why do we need Don Bradley on? Why why is well, he? Well, cuz the Ark of the Covenant awesome. holds the Ark of the Covenant is what kicks off 
it is what holds the old covenant, right? Rock on. And then you have, which is a gold box with stone tablets. And then the new covenant on the new world has a stone box with gold tablets Ooh. in it. So it's a it's a flip. It's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, he wrote a, a book. I haven't What's finished it, it yet. I'm in the, in the middle of it. It's, it's called uh, The Lost 116 Pages. Mm-hmm. What he does is he takes uh, all the source material that exists about what the first 116 pages contained, the Book of Lehi, and he kind of pieces together uh, what potentially the Book of Lehi was about. It's super interesting. So Okay, well, check this out. Here's your boy, Don Bradley. The rest is history. How a Mormon scholar turned doubter, then believer. Of course. Uh, oh, it's written by uh, Peggy Can't Do Math at the Salt Lake Tribune. Peggy Rock Can't on. Do Math. So, yeah, she still has yet to properly report on all, like, four of us in, like, five different articles. It's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so, uh, wow, so this is our boy. That's a glory shot. I'm going to pull this one up in a different picture. I got to tell you, Don Bradley, this is kind of a cool, uh, this is kind of cool photo. Hopefully someday I get a cool photo of me like this, right? But, um, of course, it's pictures for ants, so we're going to have to move it up. But that's actually a pretty cool picture right there. So we yeah. got to get Don Brown. I've seen him on Saints Unscripted. Hmm. So, um, yeah, let's. You're, you're invited on. Don Bradley, right here, right now. You're invited on to come on and uh, talk to us about the We, got, we got someone who's related to Zeus. You what? kidding me? Zeus and the Titans. That's wild. What? Actually, I think Riley is too. Related There's to Zeus and the Titan, what this, this you have deep in family search, you get family some search is starting to sound stuff. a lot more uh, <laughs> fictitious now. Yeah, it's <laughs> so. a bit more Zeus, <laughs> yes, what? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think Riley is actually related to some Norse gods. I'm related and to Frodo Baggins. Are you really? Is it <laughs> yeah, there? it says it in Family s- Search. <laughs> no, legit. Like there are some of these that people have just like put in way back there. You yeah, Don Bradley's not coming on now. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, why not? Like, we, no, dude, come on our show, bro. We're legit. We want to talk academia. P.S. I'm related to Zeus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, 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 no. Legitimately, go back far enough in Family Search. People that have entered it in. True. Doesn't mean you're related to Zeus. It means someone oh, okay. entered Zeus in the family tree along the line, right? And so now like, that's just cool. Yeah, and so it's it's funny. Like you'll see it like uh So it's like Wikipedia. And, and occasionally it's actually <laughs> from like family legend, right? So for Riley's, it's because she's got some like Finnish royalty back in there, and mm. they said that they were descended from certain gods, right? And so that's what it says in the family tree because it's like, hey, Actually, I think some of that's got to be true because there's no way that all of it is false. And like, you're right here saying that I'm the one. <laughs> Look, she's hot enough; she could pull off the claim of being deity. Some of these other people, it's just like no, there's no way. <laughs> You there's guys, no there, way that you're related. There's to actually Bailey. there. There is a book, and I don't have it now. I'm gonna have to get it uh, from. Uh, I believe it was my mom told me about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a book that talks about how actually Galileans' uh, immaculate conception happened quite often. It wasn't a single off with with Mary and Jesus. Mm. That there was actually immaculate conception that happened quite often. Uh, I'll have to get that book. I'm sure like as soon she's watching, so as, as soon yeah, as she yeah. sees it. Wait, your mom's watching? <laughs> yeah. Yo, and Sister Bowman, what's <laughs> up, girl? <laughs> How you doing, girl? <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't been called Sister Bowman in a long time, and uh, her last name's not Bowman. So. Oh, yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Way to bring up old Schmidt? wounds, dude. <laughs> dude, that's messed up, dude. Yeah, that's messed up, Carter. So what are we supposed to call her? Stephanie? What? <laughs> you Erica. could say Erica. 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 Uh, Yo, what's up, Jordan's Erica? <laughs> okay, that's cool. So anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, gosh, we were going somewhere. Okay, we talked the Herodian lamps. Then there was, come on, there was uh, archaeological evidences what of other cool, Old uh, Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon. Well, one we thing, already burned through the cavities in the rock. Yeah, let's uh, talk Christ about another Christ was a thing. tecton. We knew Christ was a tecton. We got so much. Ooh, I, mean, I got another one that's cool. Hit it, and okay. We, and we actually were taught it. So, Mount Moriah, right? Mount Moriah. Yes, we only have so much more time. So if you got any questions for these guys, Hayden mm-hmm. and Jackson, Paul, hit us up with some super chats. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we were in Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia. Checked out Bethabara. We could talk Bethabara. You know what I'm saying? Should we do Bethabara? Bethabara is really hey, interesting. Wait, I, I want to talk about one thing that I said I want to watch while we're here. So we were combing through footage. Oh, and do we have I, it? I knew of this happening it. after it happened, but we were combing through through some of the drone footage we took in Jordan. 
and Brad had an incident. Can we pull that up? Yeah, I'll I'll is, find. Is it uh, in the Discord? No, this? it's it's a YouTube link. I'll tell you and then tell you the thumb or the timestamp. Time time yeah, did you edit it and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. trim it down? This cool. was a fun moment. This w- this By the was, way, Cardin, uh, I think you need to call this? Brittany. Oh, as why? This is getting through. <laughs> is that what oh, she said? Oh, good the night, chat? kids. Oh, I love you, children. You know what I'm saying? Rye, yeah, rye, geeky. So What's up? So she must be putting him to bed and watching the live stream on the YouTube. So you guys are awesome. Wish you were here, but you got to go to bed. So um, uh, Dean Schwank gives us a super chat, says prayers for Chris to heal. Hey, sad to see uh, hear if something's uh, going on with Chris. Long time watcher of the show. Commenter extraordinaire. And Snagret says Carden with lots of ends. Oh, it looks like there is a large contingent of people telling me to say goodbye to my kids. So, not goodbye, but good night to my kids. And you are going to pull up. Okay, I'm sending uh, it right now, the link. You're sending it right now. Okay, and you're going <laughs> to you're gonna start at 442. We don't want to share more because we're going to be doing some special episode, this episodes. Is, this is a beautiful moment. Showing all this stuff. But is this, this is like when Jordan moment. got stabbed in the back by the camel acacia post? That was hilarious. Oh my God. This yeah. is, that I, I have a scar from that well. camel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, bro, that was I'll, I'll send that. I'll send that clip too. That's funny, dude. <laughs> okay, cool. So here um, we are. So go to 442. That's where we're going to. That's 442. where it starts. Or in that area. And make sure 442. Sure Here's 440. And you want me to have the sound on, you say? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, let's see here. Oh, this is the uncolor corrected footage, right? Yeah. yeah. Is this a boy or a girl? Oh, boy. <laughs> here comes the rain. Uh, my saddle's coming off. Your saddle's coming off? Yeah. <laughs> we are the Paul Brothers, <laughs> I and know. we are right now in Wadi Araba, the exact place that Lehi and his oh family no, would have Oh no, Brad's traveled. struggling back. Going yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm holding the wait, other wait, camera. Uh, wait for it. Just wait, just wait. We are the Paul. Jackson, look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> just ignoring you. I was so worried. Oh, this I'm this sounds good. You. This won't make it into the yeah, we'll watch episode. This. Okay, dude. In well, that moment, I was like, "Oh crap! Did that land in the drone shot? Did I just ruin the shot by uh, falling off a dude, camel?" Do, do you <laughs> know what's messed up is how little I care that you fell off the camel. Yeah. I could Oh, your saddle endure. falling off? Uh, oh, we are the, the Paul, Paul brothers. brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, savage. Such a I get jerk, it though. You bro. you were in producer mode. You were trying to make the show happen. I was just like, shoot, true, I dude. think You're I'm just in the shot. Cog in the machine. Yeah, I, I just thought I was in the shot, and I was like, I don't want to screw this up. I like oh, tried to dude. steer it out of the way. Oh, there it is. Like, okay, one so more time. Funny. Let's see. One more time. Let's see. Place that Lehigh there he is. Would have there he is. On no! Back. Look how much <laughs> it's hanging off the back of that camel, dude. Dude, seriously. That was good. That's true, man. That is so funny. funny. I kept the camera off the ground, though. I yeah. Know. Out of the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Rex Good says he wants a camel. You know, you and Carolyn Wright want games a camel. They're pretty gross. You don't man. want. Oh, dude. Okay. This has to be said. What? The breath. Of camels. Oh my yeah. gosh. I'm gonna go close <laughs> and like from <laughs> twenty good. feet away, you totally hear the camel just Oh, <laughs> it's so gross, man. They're just oh. they were a lot more gross than I thought they were gonna be. I yeah. thought they'd be like kind of Especially since the baby camel cute. was so cute, dude. I love baby camels. I wanted it. I wanted to bring it home. Okay, yeah. so something to say in kind of the silence while we were looking for that. Uh my buddy Sean is is watching as well. He just sent me uh, a Google search that one percent uh, of U.S. women claim virgin births in the U.S. Really? That's really <laughs> uh, to this day. <laughs> yeah. Claim oh, it. How many are then <laughs> verified? Yeah. How do they verify? Wait. Ver- first verify. off, thank your friend. What is his name? <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Sean. And can you put that link in Discord? Shut so up, wait. Sean. He said something okay. that said. Uh, is the immaculate conception scientifically possible? This experiment proved that the information uh, was enough for the development of an embryo from an unfertilized tadpole cell. Uh, exp- it proves that immaculate conception is possible. What? But like, what? I don't understand. Yeah. So, 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 so I, women can give I birth without. Know. 
without it's having a, a man super reliable source. He's <laughs> <laughs> super super reliable. Okay, so we got another super chat here from Jonah Barnes. Good to hear from Jonah Barnes. Thanks, Jonah Barnes. Says, how can we please support this content? We want more Paul Brothers, more Don Bradley, more streams, more and more. Do we Venmo, super chat, share, Facebook group, website, membership? When is full movie coming out? Mm, good questions. First, Those so, are a lot of so questions. First Take off, one at a time. So many questions. First off, marks. how do you support this content? I assume he was talking about us, not you. Mm, so if, if, if he's referring <laughs> to be Midnight both. Mormons, both. you want to do both of us? Both. Then you can Venmo in my Mormons. We're actually going to be able to have Zelle available and PayPal is available. I'm actually getting a physical address uh, where people can send checks because I've had a bunch of old people that want to just send checks. And like, I don't Venmo. <laughs> you know, like, can we send you a check? So I'm getting that, and um, <laughs> that's how old people sound. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> a card a check. like pixies. Can I send you a check? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then um, a Facebook group. You know, we got a Facebook group at Midnight Mormons, and we are going to have a membership going through our website soon. However, Stick of Joseph, I'm sure, has something to say about this. Yes. Yeah, so right now, please just subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Instagram. We are currently working on our website, and what we are going to do because we've had a lot of people that have reached out and said, hey, we want to support this project financially because we're we, that's the only way we can do this. Y you have to pay for all of these things, and it's expensive to do film production. And so we, uh, if you subscribe to us there as well as follow us on Instagram, we, will, we are going to be getting set up some sort of paywall where people will be able to uh, do monthly contributions to the project or do lump sum donations. And uh, we're working on on trying to make those tax deductible. Yeah, and in turn sense. they'll they'll get access to some pretty awesome and exclusive content, mm -hmm. um, and even some uh, biweekly zooms updating you on the status of premieres, the project and giving tickets to the premieres that we'll be doing in theaters. Yeah, and stuff pretty like that. Do awesome. we get awesome indulgences? And, and your sins will be forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> and your sins. Oh dear, right, that's how it goes. Oh, this is this is a Remember safe that. place. Yeah, <laughs> priestcraft. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but Cardin, I just barely sent you another uh, video. This is of Jordan when his bat he got impaled oh my with the God. back. Oh. Dude, so riding yeah. camels was wild. Yeah, it's it's they it's are so game. tall. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, because th the way they you, the way you get on them is they're on their knees, they're down, and then you get on them, and then they stand up on their and hind legs. On their first. hind legs first. It's like it they stand up. up this way. Oh, you have to have the sound on for this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back, it up, back it up. Back it up. Back, back it up. Go. <laughs> 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 Get him. Uh oh, YouTube's going. <laughs> Here, oh, get whoops! Up. Wait, wait, wait! Get no. off the YouTube and then start it over because you have to hear the camel sound. It's yeah, yeah, it's shocking. Well, why it do is, we need it to hear it? <laughs> it? It's Cardin did it perfectly before. It's true. Okay, so but here we wait, go. Let's see. Here. Crank that up. <laughs> Dude, oh that, that camel Look was not sharp happy. That and that bag. Bag. Look how sharp that <laughs> stick just Yeah, dude, that one <laughs> destroyed you. Yeah, that one, the original round handle had broken, and it had broken off, and it was just the shard of acacia yeah, wood had a yeah, spike. that had a spike on it. How did you survive, Jordan? <laughs> Tell us. Wild. They well, he good. told me not to lean back. But I was not listening, apparently, <laughs> and I leaned back because I thought he I thought he told me to lean back. <laughs> like, All right, don't lean back. And I was like, OK, I'll lean back. And then <laughs> and then it just dude. Also, right look how swag back. you look right now, bro. It looks like you're wearing a turtleneck with the TV in the desert. Wait, yeah. were you yeah. not wearing a turtleneck? <laughs> no, I had I had like a. Like a neck thing. It was just a for COVID. It <laughs> <laughs> I 100% thought it was a turtleneck. No, it was just to protect Dude, my neck. Dude, it's so from cool. If you had a chain had a and a turtleneck, storm. Oh. if you had a sandstorm, I could pull cover it your up face. You would fit face. right in down here in LA. They're always trying to like dress homeless, even though they have lots of money, and like wear <laughs> weird turtlenecks and scarves. Turtle and see, how many homeless people do you see walking around in white No, the artsy, the artsy people. You <laughs> oh, know the what I'm Not just white turtlenecks, white pants as well. Yeah. That is stupid. Was pretty ball that was like yeah. awesome. hey, I was trying to stay cool. No, yeah, it was perfect. Man. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. cool. So um we have to we've gone over so much today. Our yeah, I think we're coming but up on I, an hour and a half. Yeah, I, I was about to say I uh, want to answer some questions. can we open up questions to like the general public so that we can answer no, some? No, no, the unwashing? 
<laughs> the non-members of the chat? Indulge, their indulgences. Super chats or of members. Course. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, come on. What do they you don't expect here? us to hang out with, like, no, I'm just kidding. Her, everyone send uh, quick, what questions quick questions. Answer. We're going to do a speed round of yeah, questions. Yeah, do we have any questions? Send a bunch of questions. We'll answer so as quickly there, as possible. There was one, we'll, and we'll answer it right now. Uh, someone asked uh, about Jesus being a mason. Uh, so Okay. But it was so... He was not a carpenter. Carpenter was translated from the word tecton, which uh, meant means builder, craftsman, or builder. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. which which. Most oh, when you said mason, I was thinking like a Freemason or something. That's which is <laughs> interesting. Yeah, yeah. I actually. think that's what they meant. I think they might have meant, meant as a Freemason. As a Freemason. As a but, Freemason. No, but that's actually but super interesting when you break that down. Like this idea that Christ, because that what uh, that's what a mason is. It's someone who builds with stone, and yeah. that's what he would have been. And the whole so Freemason free. thing comes from. You know, yeah, that's really secret things that are passed down through the stonemasons, which is super interesting. Yeah, Dude, all right, so, so, look at that. so he was uh, definitely Descartes. a mason. Yeah, though. thanks, Deacon. So we got two super chats. First off, Silver Eagle 1776 says mason. this channel has saved my sanity. You know what, Silver Eagle? Expound, expound upon that. Because there's no sanity here that she's like, wait, yeah, I'm actually not that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I fit right in with these weirdos. You know what I'm saying? Snagrit. But no, actually, I didn't join this cult for the heathen to be able to answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh my God. Wild. Bro, Snagrit, I'll give you the same thing I gave Cardi. You get one a day, bro. You get one joke a day about my inactivity. <laughs> the heathens. <laughs> 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 I don't think it was talking about you. I was talking about the heathen being the unwashing that are not giving oh, super chats or joining. No, he said answer. 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 Yeah, yeah, he yeah, said yeah. answer yeah. question. Dude, that's oh. hard. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you went for the jugular. <laughs> yeah. We do things Sorry, different. Sorry, I had to in with that. It was so good. Okay, so Snagger. Silver Eagle. Actually, I would love to hear some of your feedback. We haven't heard a lot from you. I believe this is the first super chat that I remember in a long time. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, how do you think this channel has saved your sanity? One of, people ask me that sometimes. Like, well, what's your channel about? And we don't actually have an official logo. I'm not sorry, not logo. We don't have an official like motto or anything like that. But I definitely feel that secularism, especially wokeism and anti-Mormonism, has a suc has succeeded in making young people, uh, well, even us, because <laughs> millennials are still considered young people at church, uh, convince you that you're stupid if you believe. And one of the things that I love about this channel, and also about working with Hayden and Jackson and Jordan and uh, brother Rico, okay, in the stick of Joseph is we're showing the amplified possibilities, both archaeological, uh, spiritual, and physical, that you're not stupid if you believe. You're not stupid if you believe in Lehi's journey because, look, there's all these archaeological evidences that show that not only is it possible, but, you know, it's probable that he was at this well. Or it's probable that if it went down, it went down this way. And there's a lot, a lot of wide berth for many of these beloved narratives that teach us spiritual truths to also be physically true as well. So um, when you say this has saved my sanity, I I'd be curious, is that an aspect of what you think has saved your sanity? Or uh, what intrigues you? Just just give us some more feedback. And then we got a couple also, of others yeah, here. Snagrit, also, Snagrit, he clarified. He meant to ask questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Yeah, okay. It's actually kind of funnier, though. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Okay, so um, also we got another super chat here. Thank you very much, <laughs> Descartes, that says, thank you, Midnight Strike Through Mormons, for heeding the prophetic call to use your talents to promote the restored gospel. You get it, girlfriend. Or wait, Descartes, that could be a dude. I don't know. Wow, misgendering. Bro. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, they seriously. them. It's a they them. You know, true dad. So you deserve all the blessings in the world. Well, thank you, Descartes. That's pretty awesome of you. Thank you. And, oh, boy, uh, here we go. Big shout out. And then Crystal says, more hippie Jesus. Hey. <laughs> now, yeah, do I think they're they talking about Jordan. <laughs> yeah, I think they're talking about Jordan. <laughs> oh. That's, that's my girlfriend. Hey. Who just paid oh. $5. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's pretty. Good job, bro. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, this is a I, legend. I really hit out, hit it out of my league for sure. Yeah. Rock yeah. on. So anyway, um, that's how it's done. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, guys, we literally so only have stuff. three minutes and twenty. Here, seconds I got one left. question from okay. my buddy Sean. It's actually a really good question. Okay, we uh, got three minutes and twenty one. He seconds. says, okay. "Are you going to be able to make it to Bountiful? I've heard it's incredibly difficult to get approved to go." Mm. Yeah. So actually, Bountiful isn't as hard as as Nahum. So Bountiful. Uh, Oman is in the top three most uh, safe countries in the world, which yeah. is super interesting. 
and uh, That's Salala. Impressive. Yeah, it yeah. is impressive, especially you know when Where you look at the that? rest of the Middle Eastern countries. <laughs> yeah, not the safest places. But uh, Bountiful, yes, we we actually don't think we're gonna have a problem with Bountiful. It's gonna be Nahum that's the issue. So going into Yemen because really? they have like okay. a, a a civil war civil going war? on, <laughs> which is pretty a hard. A failed state. <laughs> that said, though, we got we got a Marine buddy who uh, you know he he'll keep us safe. And so we're, we're yeah, going to see we'll if we can hire some security and, and see if we can go to Yemen anyway. And you're, go you're, with you're, GoPro. Taking go, you're, awesome. you're taking a GoPro. Hippie with Jesus. The Yemen, bro. Yeah. You're taking a yeah, GoPro. It might be GoPro. Yeah, your camera <laughs> crew may not uh, be there. Come on, hippie Jesus. <laughs> you could straight up, like, maybe just, like, you know, like in The Chosen where all the They don't come believe together. in Jesus, man. Well, they neither <laughs> did the people that Jesus was convincing. He hadn't come yet, baby. Yeah. I Sprinkle some of that hippie Jesus no. sauce on him and just, you know, it'll yeah. all be good. I have a pretty good life insurance pl- plan, though. So, really? Yeah. What is hippie Jesus? So, my wife's got her fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but we'll bottle and sell it. It'll be like, there's so many MLMs in Utah. We'll just add to it. Right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Brad, are you a hockey fan? Oh, man. I am Canadian. That's one of the questions. So, I have to love the Oilers because I'm from Edmonton. Yeah. Dude, I, Edmonton's I have it's beautiful. I it actually is. love that area. It's a great place. But I also, I don't think I've watched hockey in like probably a decade. Mm. It's been a very long time. <laughs> so wow. not really. Okay, mm. cool. So anyway, uh, before we go and before we sign off, everybody, please, two things. First off, make sure that you like this live stream. Okay. Make sure oh, that yeah. you, uh, you know, press that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, about 30% to 40% in any given live stream or any given video that we have of people haven't made uh, a YouTube account yet and haven't subscribed. And one of the best ways to catch up with our content, we're releasing five videos a week sometimes. That's a lot of good stuff Mm -hmm. that's coming up and there's a lot of good inside jokes that you'll miss out on. There's a lot of really good content that you won't be aware of if you do not subscribe. So make sure you subscribe and you press that little button on the side that gives alerts. Okay, so like this stream, share with your friends if you can. And then um, subscribe, or we will subscribe. find you. Yeah, or we will find you. Now, I will also, find you. He's a marine. <laughs> also, yeah, they <laughs> oh know my how gosh. to Courage. They Commitment. know how to do these things. Also, head over once you're done with this, okay, to the stick of Joseph, Ooh. okay, and give them a sub. This is a totally worthwhile project, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of us here. You're going to be seeing a lot more of us there. You're going to mm-hmm. see a lot more of them here and a lot more of them there. This is a great channel to subscribe to. It's in its infancy, um, so just make sure that you guys go over there and share this trailer, yeah, all right, all with your, your friends, friends and family. All your friends and family because it's good stuff. And um, yeah, we're gonna play this one last time as the outro to this um, to this live stream. Dang, so without go. any further ado, we'll say this is midnight strike through moments. Love you guys. We will see you guys. Thanks in the for next joining, program. guys. Ooh, Love ooh. you guys. See you around. Don't say anything until the trailer's done yet. Ah! One book has stood at the center of a rising faith to believers. It stands as another witness of Jesus Christ. It has changed history and influenced millions. Yet many respected figures challenge its authenticity. We just know too much about Joseph Smith. We know he was a con man in 1820 when he found golden tablets and translated them into scripture and believed that Jesus visited North America. These beliefs are barking mad. So is the Book of Mormon fact or fiction, history or hoax? Well, we want to find out for ourselves. We are the Paul Brothers. With a mission to find the answer to this question, we were led off of internet forums and even out of libraries. Because just as with Lehi, our call to adventure was to depart into the wilderness. Led by archaeologist and researcher Jim Gee, we set out to put ourselves and the Book of Mormon to the test. The blade is from steel, 
but the handle is from silver. We will put the claims of the Book of Mormon to the test to find out if it is an obvious fraud or if it truly is the stick of Joseph.